What is up, nerds? It's your boy, Knock on Tom, or in the case of my professor, it's Dylan. So it's not some random YouTuber that I found and uh, stole this devlog off of. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is uh, to any of my other viewers, and you probably don't know what this is. It's uh, it's a devlog. So let me just grant that over here. This is my devlog. Uh, a devlog oh, at my postmodern. So a devlog is essentially a journal you keep when you're making a game. Now, um, so you, essentially every, uh, I guess it would be every day you would write in it or like put your thoughts into it. But like, what just what happened today? Like, uh, if you had a great idea from yesterday and it, you tried it today and didn't work and why that sort of stuff, you just keep a log of your development. You know, it's your development log straightforward. Your postmortem, uh, your postmortem is, uh, your thoughts after your presentation so for for our, uh for our game or our assignment for fundamentals of game mechanics is we had one uh core game loop so a core game loop and we had to make two separate games sorry it's two separate games uh and so what this means is that like what well first of all what's a core game loop okay so if you take a game like uh I don't know, uh, let's take Halo, right? So what's Halo's core game loop? You shoot, you run, and then you, I don't know, you do the thing, right? <laughs> There's a lot more to Halo than that, but like this is what you do. You shoot and run, it's a shooter. It's a first person shooter, you shoot, you run, you do the thing, which is like your objective. Uh, and you do that over and over and over again until you win. This is a core game loop. Now what makes games from games like Halo, and Gears of War and other first person first person shooters different is its secondary mechanics, right? So like what what's 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 uh, Halo's secondary mechanics versus what's Call of Duty secondary mechanics? Like Call of Duty, if you think about online, it has loadouts. Now uh, Halo didn't always have loadouts. It's you had your you had like your starting like BR or like you know uh, you had your starting BR or your assault rifle. But you never, like, you could start with a shotgun. All right? Uh, let's just make this bigger. All right, so I'll just erase all this. But, yeah, so th th that's what makes it different, right? It's a secondary mechanic. So that was our assignment, right? We had one core game loop, and we had to make two separate games using secondary mechanics. And we had a theme. Now, my partner, James, great guy. I love James. Uh, we had to make, we had picked a theme, Survival. All right, survival was our theme for our games, and we so we had to make two separate survival games using the same core game loop. And what our core game loop was, um, it was gather resources, gather, and then you would uh, you would uh, craft or fight, and then you would um, kind of like uh, yeah, allocate. We call it allocate. We would allocate your resources, so it was like food and water mainly. So we use this, this process, every turn this happened for both players. And we had to come up with two entirely separate games. So we were thinking, we we're throwing out some ideas. Um, I originally didn't want to do survival, right? Because I have made survival games in the past, especially uh, board games, survival board games in the past. I didn't really want to give it another shot. But James said he had never made one, and I thought that was really interesting. Because that means he can bring a lot of new ideas to the table. And he did. So we decided to go with it again. I gave it another shot. And as we discussed what should be our two different games, we came up with a simple solution of PvE and PvP. Now, yeah, there you go. Let me show you. Fix this. So you don't, if you don't know what these two is, PvE is player versus environment or player versus everyone. And this is player versus player. So right then, we already had two very different secondary mechanics or play styles, cooperative and competitive. That's a good start, right? So how do I, hold on a second, give me a sec. I've never used this program. Oh, here we go, sweet. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so, so for our first game, so let's go uh, game number one was our PvE game. So, no, no, sorry. It was not a PvE game, I lied to you. Our first game was a PvP game, actually. And we were talking about what, how do you make survival PvP, right? So, 
we were discussing some ideas and it was either going to be th these were our teacher Yifat hello Yifat gave us some options to give she gave us a card game a board game or a tile game so these were our types of board games that we had to choose from and you know we were talking about what what would make a good pvp survival game so we went with board for the first one so we had a board right one player sat here one player sat here and so across from each other to make it a pvp element and we're talking about it's okay so we got this we got our board oh hold on that's awful i mean <laughs> we got our board game how can we make this? This is already like when you you face each other. It's already there's already a competitive aspect to it because you're you're literally facing your opponent, right? So, okay. So how could we make this PvP? So you have to compete for something, right? And it's not usually like kill the other player because we didn't want it. Oh, kill the other player. That's that's the goal, right? Because that's that's really easy and that's really fast because the we thought the emergent strategy strategy would be go find the nearest weapon and just kill the player. So we, okay, first off we started with resources, which is food and water, right? So we have food and water and you're competing for food and water. So that means there's spots on the board, there's like four spots on the board that you have food and water and you would, you have to go get them right in the same day. So there'd be at daytime, we just kind of came up with this like immediately. At daytime, you would go hunt and search for food and water. And at nighttime is when you try to sabotage your opponent. So that already had a turn cycle, right? From that thought, we had turns, right? And so you have day or turn order, really. It was like how the turns progress. So you have day and night. Because like... Nighttime survival and daytime survival are very different things. You you go about differently. It's more, it's typically more dangerous. So we thought what would be a good way to make it more dangerous is that you attack at night and you hunt during the day. You can't attack the other player during the day because you you, you yourself are getting supplies. And so then we had to come up with position. So what's our like? If we want to attack, how are we going to do that? How are we going to play that out? So you attack. And then you, well, let's just say hunt, right? You hunt for food. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to attack? We couldn't really figure it out right off the hop. So we kind of put that in the back, on the back burner. And we're like, we'll come up with this later. Let's just think about hunting for first. Like, what do we want to do? So every day you need food and water, right? And this took us a little while to keep track of and how we're going to do Because I was originally thinking we had like, uh, a kind of a table right and then like it'd be a bunch of days on it and you put like markers on it like okay i ate and drank here i didn't eat here but i drank on here and blah 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 blah. that was a little complicated and we only had a week to do this and we wanted to minimize the amount of re like supplies we needed to make the game uh so we we still ended up having a lot but that's more than okay so what we did was we we made the food we made cards all right, we made four different kinds of cards. I'll get to the other ones in a second. But we had, let's just uh, change the color over here. We had food. And we had water. So these were our first, oh, there you go. These were our first two cards. And now, if you have to eat and drink every night, it felt kind of stale to keep these as only units of one. So like one of these count as food, food for one day, one of these count as water for one day. And you kind of just ran around the board or like, in, like we didn't actually have a board at this point or like the, a spot. We just kind of have like conceptually, you would run, just run around the board and just collect food and water. That was kind of boring, right? And then we thought, what if there's a, what if there's ways to have more than one food and water? Like what if cards are worth more? So we came up with like animals, like uh, a, the best food in the game was the boar, right? Oh, hold on a second. And the boar, the boar was worth three food. So you could, you would like, if you get it and you could have it on table and we had like, we had uh, dice 
uh, like little d4s to help keep track. It was wasn't really a part of the game. It just kind of aided the players in keeping track of how much food and water they had uh, that they, they like, these were worth. So if the boar had three days, you would just like on like, you would use it the first night. It would immediately go down to two. Then you would wait, and then you, like next turn you go down to one, and so on and so forth. And then the best water was like a jug, and it was the same thing, right? Oh, give me a second. That's worth uh, three as well. And then we, since our prototypes were a normal playing card, we thought like, what if we gave, uh, sorry, since our normal prototype for the game what, were playing cards, like a, a bicycle cards, so, you know, like Jack, Queen, King, Ace, blah, 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 blah. We thought, what if, um, what if uh, we gave the face cards more value? So we had the boar and the jug. Like, what else can we get? So we came up with a few others, some really interesting ones. Uh, some they also had, like, uh, debuffs to it like uh, there's rotten meat and salt water that had different effects that like you couldn't move right then we came up with like well how do you catch a boar with your hands you can't really do that the water jug you can find that's fine or <laughs> the water jug you can find and that's fine but what about a boar or like any like a rabbit right like the rabbit was worth two how can you catch a rabbit with your hands so then we came up with <laughs> materials so materials uh helped you craft weapons okay this gives us a whole this gives us crafting that's, that's a whole new thing it's a whole new like mechanic we had so now we had places to craft right and we're still imagining this all on a board and you would kind of like run around on these spaces and you would gather right so you had materials now and materials were like they were like rocks. They were, uh, it was rope. It was tape. And there was a bunch of other stuff, right? And from those, you can make, da -da -da, you can make weapons, right? So we already had four groups of cards, which was perfect. And then these weapons were like, okay, so what if you can craft weapons to hunt boars and help you get weapons for the player? Right, like we can. That's a that's a good way to like attack the other players if you have a weapon. But we still didn't want you to just be able to outright kill the um, outright kill the other player because that that defeats the purpose of the whole game. Right, you want to survive and you have to do what you have to. But eventually, you would have to go and attack the other opponent. Right. So this is kind of kind of where we came up with how to how to attack because we're like, okay, well, you know what, we got we got materials on the board. We got food and water on the board, and like th that's kind of the, that's the main thing we wanted. You wanted to run around this board and hunt for shit, right? So, okay, so let's now work on attack. How are we gonna attack? Uh, first off, we just had normal dice rolls, and these added bonuses. So there was like an M1 Grand. <laughs> uh, there's an M1 Grand which gave you plus five to your roll. And you had three use. No, no, it was sorry. It was the other way around. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, it was plus three to roll and had five uses because there was there's five rounds in a, in a magazine. So we originally had that. We also had a pistol and a knife, right? So these were our weapons. Now you couldn't craft these weapons, but they'd be in in the deck and any of the decks. You shuffle them in before you play the game. But you can also make like a spear and uh, like a trap, stuff like that, right? You can make ways to, you can, I come up with ways to like, you can make weapons so you're not totally lost. And you can use these weapons to hunt hunt for animals too. So like on the card it'd say, um, only take this card if you had, uh, oh, a spear or better, right? And that kind of came up with, this is the way we kind of came up with um, how, how we're going to draw cards. And like how many turns you get and how many moves like okay well we'll think about like we'll think about movement in a second right so i think we'll get that to that in a second we wanted to flush this out more so we we came up with a whole crafting list of stuff right a whole big list of remember these are still all playing cards so we had to write them out like the jack of spades is this the two of diamonds is this so we came up with this big huge thing and this crafting list, and it kind of started to feel like a real game. And we kept the craft, crafting list out the whole thing. It was it was really handy. 
and you know you kind of felt like you were preparing for war whenever you're like looking at this like okay so what do i like there were there's a strategy here like okay what do i have what do i need and based on like what you get so if you got like uh let's say a rock and a rope like what can i make with this you know like oh i can defend myself so i'm going to defend myself but now we're going to go with hand size okay so like how many cards can you have in your hand and after a few play tests of just this there was almost infinite you just because you the the emergent thing was you have two moves in a game and whenever you land on a space you draw two So you would land on one space, so I'd be here. I'd draw two from this spot, and then I'd move again. And I'd draw two from this spot. And so then you would like, okay, so I need food and water. So you would go to here, and like, okay, got food and got water. And like, hopefully you would get more than last you one day. Because if you just got food and water, and you only got enough for one, you would be like, okay, well now I just gotta stay here and just keep going back and forth and drawing food and water. And that would be that would be kind of just you just kind of doing your own thing until you ran out and you had to go attack. We didn't want to we didn't want to force you to always attack the player. We wanted to eventually come down to, it. but like not kind of it was kind of weird. we didn't really want to force their hand. So we gave them enough time and ways to collect resources to help themselves out. And uh, yeah, so we had this going, and then oh, I'm just trying to get my train of thought here. <laughs> uh. Yes, yeah, so we had this whole we had this emergent strategy of uh, just kind of walk around the board, gathering resources, and we weren't really attacking each other at first. We did eventually when all the cards ran out, but it wasn't for a little bit. And then we noticed how broken this is. Oh my god, it was like, this is like Seuss's, Sorry, it, this was so busted. This M1 Grand. I'm so glad we play tested it because like what ended up happening was. James, I think, had the Emma Grant. He just ended up chasing me around the board until I died. Essentially, I ran out because he would just like come to my space because it was just a honestly, it was just a straight circle, right? It was, that's all it was. There wasn't like much of a board. It was just a straight circle the whole time, and we're like, okay, so he just chased me around it with the Emma Grand. And attacked me five times essentially it took all my stuff and i died and that wasn't very fun that didn't feel very fair it's like okay okay hold on we need to balance <laughs> we need to balance some things here so what we ended up doing is we took away this <laughs> it still had a plus three to roll but you can only use it once because it's an old rifle you just randomly found same with the pistol same with the knife we thought it would be more fair like i know the knife has technically infinite uses but just for balancing sake we're like screw it you know <laughs> let's just let's just have it one use because it's ridiculous uh so we came up with a new board actually it wasn't even a board at all it was kind of like we had cards with locations on them I, I, drew, I just drew this up in a second we had uh it's more like there were six locations oh sorry so we had a board like this <laughs> And uh, it was still kind of the one way. So it was still just kind of like going around in a circle. We also came up with you move at the same time. And now this is really key. Because as we were playtesting this, we saw people actually sit back and think about where they wanted to move. And as a signal, whenever, if my piece was here, and James's piece was here, right, there'd be either way I'd move towards him this way or move towards him this way. And you know, be one step closer. We also used to have it where you can attack from a range of one. So if James was here instead, he can attack me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this kind of helped where you would plan out your moves now. Just like when you're really surviving. So let's say I got food from here, right? This was food. This was water. And this is materials. And I got food and I need water. So I was like, okay, I have to go here, right? But James knows that. Now, I can go, the way the game works is you can go one night, so well, every night, so let's just draw this out, every night you needed food and water, right? If you didn't, sorry, every night you needed food and water, and then it would go to the next day, right? So you would lay your food and, food and water cards out on the table, saying like, I used, look, I used two food, or one food and one water, I'm not cheating. It was just a way to reassert the other player that the other player isn't cheating, because then that's no fun. 
Now, let's say for this day I had food and I had no water. Now, I would still live until I would still live the next day. But if I didn't have water on this day, if I only had food again, I'd be dead. That was like the rule of the game. You had to have food and water at least once every two days or you would live. Now, so I needed water, but I could live another day. So would James call my bluff because he knows that I need water, but I would be fine. And he'd go this way or, you know, or he would go this way. It was kind of really interesting to see players actually sit back and plan their move. And once they're ready, they'd put their hand on their piece. I thought that was really cool. Then we changed up the map a little bit because it was just kind of felt endless, this circle thing. And what we did was we did this. We made it so that now James had a direct connection to me, but I could also go over here. I can go over here. You know, like I had more ways to go. This gave me a, this third option really helped because we could switch places or I, I could not move at all. And he can go here or something, you know? Like added, these three paths added a lot more strategy to the game. We were thinking about adding paths here and uh, like to here, but we I, I, I kind of liked how the way this one worked out too. Uh, so we decided not to add it and we took away the range. So now you technically had a range of zero. If James wanted to attack me, this is James. Uh, if James wanted to attack me, he had to be on my space, right? So that way it was a lot more of psyching people out, right? And if I had no weapons to defend myself, obviously I would want to move. Uh, and yeah, after this, the game was kind of fully, almost like not fully fleshed out. We had a week, so um, yeah. After this, the game was like really coming to where we wanted to. It was like kind of a slow pace. It was a more, much more of a thinking game than it was an action game, and that's exactly what we wanted. One, pe we wanted people to like slow down and think about stuff, right? They want to think about what do I need, where do I go, what do they have, these materials played out a much bigger role than I had thought it would and that's really good too because that you could defend yourself. We also added in the, the option of attacking with your fists instead and it'd just be a straight up dice roll. So you literally roll the dice to see if you win. And let's talk about that. Let's talk about combat because this, at this point we were ready to, well before this point we were really ready to talk about combat but let's talk about combat. So whenever someone won the roll, so let's say James rolled a 4 and I rolled a three right and but i had a plus one to attack because i had a uh let's, i think i had a spear right so now we tied and so that way we put we did the the risk rule so to, uh, to defense wins on a tie so what what you would do is that we used to um i'd say give me all your give me your water and if james had any water in his hand he would give me one of his water so if he had like Let's say he had three different water cards. He would give me one. And then I'd be... That's it, because I, I needed water for that night. I had water. But this kind of just made it so that once you got a negative water card, like, like salt water or dirty water, you would just hold on to it as long as you can until they attacked you. Which was kind of what I wanted, but or what we wanted, not but not at the same time. So what we changed it to after that, he would just fan out his hand and hit, take one, and hopefully you would get what you wanted, right? So like you'd quickly search their pockets and just take whatever you, you, you had. Which I thought was a lot more fun. There was a lot more uh, added that element of randomness and chance into it. So like if I attacked James, he would still have a chance to keep his good stuff, you know? So I really liked that. Uh, keeping track of the food and water was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Which was nice. And uh, yeah, so that was essentially the whole game. We had the crafting, which... Oh yeah, sorry, turn order. So back to our core game loop, which is right here. So you would gather. Essentially, there's a turn order. You would spend two turns gathering, so two movements. Two movements gathering. So like I go get food, two draw two cards of food, draw two cards of water, and then after they're both on that, you would craft and fight. So you would craft first, then you would fight, right? So. So in case you wanted, it gave you a chance if you wanted to make defenses for that turn, you could, you had to. You couldn't attack each other to the day, but essentially on the first move you couldn't attack, attack each other. So let's say at the start of the turn we both moved to the same spot, James couldn't attack me because it wasn't nighttime yet. 
So I still had a chance to get away, but he could also at the same time just move to the same spot as me, right? Didn't matter at that point. So that, that was good. That's what we wanted. So you'd craft and then you'd fight. And at the end of the night, so after like you took away his best stuff or he, you took it or whatever happened, you would allocate. Right? So you would say, okay, here's my food and water for tonight. And that kind of took you out of the game a little bit, but it still show, it just is more for show. Like I am eating and drinking and that's it. And so there'd be a disc discard pile in the middle. And this was actually really key. This discard pile, the bigger it was, it showed the more dire the situation would be. Because once you discarded a card, you could not get it back. And that was important. Because once you ate that apple or that you ate that boar to its completion, there was no way of getting it back. So once each of these spots had a deck of cards, like I mentioned, right? So the food deck was here, one deck was here. Each spot had its own deck. There's two spots to get food, two spots to get water, two spots to get parts. Now they weren't like all next to each other like this, they were mixed up. But you couldn't, there's, uh, yeah, I forget the exact uh, positions. But, uh, yeah, so once these decks ran out, that was it. You had to fight for whatever's left on the island and fight for whatever the other player has. So that was our core game loop, and that was our game. We called this game <laughs> Escape from Clip Art Island because James's art is amazing and has a bunch of really funny clip art. And it kind of gave, like, the uh, a lightheartedness to the game. But in the real game, I think we would, um... We'd add, like, just put like just normal food and water, not like all the memes and stuff we put on there. But yeah, that, this was our first game. Uh, I'm going to do the second game and then move to the postmortem all in all. So game number two. Let's go over here. Game number two was the PVE. So it was a cooperative game, right? And we were thinking like... How would you cooperatively survive <clears throat> in this game? What, what does that mean? So we racked our heads about it for a little bit, and we came up with the idea of traveling, traveling together as a group. You know, trying to get from location A to B without dying. Right, working together. And that was pretty good. Or it was either that, or like survive for at one spot for a amount of time. Right, like. Like someone comes and rescues you. Um, so it was kind of be like we were going to say like zombies, but we didn't. We wanted we didn't want to say zombies. We wanted to say like just make it like ambiguous as to what it was. Maybe you would like build defenses. You know, you had a little like a little castle, and like <laughs> like they would come for you this way, and like you'd have to go outside and like gather resources. Because remember, we still had to use we still had to use this game loop right here, right? gather, craft, fight, allocate. So, and okay, so what if, like, it was more of a defense and stuff like that? And this was, like, we kind of played about it and, like, okay, so what if, what if, like, yeah, there was this fortress, but what if fortress was, like, over here? Right? And you had to, you and me and James had to get there. I, I like this idea a lot more. You know, like, that, that seems more of a cooperative game to me. You know, like, well, I mean, this is two, but at the same time, I just like this whole path game. That's actually what I ended up calling it. I ended up calling it the path. So, okay, so how do we represent this? Okay, so we have an A and a B we want to get to. How do we get there? And I sat on this for a little bit, and I came up with location cards. And since we wanted to reuse assets from the other deck, we already had food, water, hold on a second. We already had food. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Sorry. We already had food. And water. And we had... We had materials. And we had weapons, right? So we already had these... We already had these material, these cards, these decks that we made for the other game, and we wanted to reuse them. For our next game so I was like okay so since we're already making cards why not add a location cards right so essentially and we'll make this kind of a card slash tile game like the other one was a card slash board game so I was like okay so what if there's a deck of locations and there's like 
a bunch of them were face down. Or it was either they're face down or you flip them over. It didn't really make a difference. But for this one, you can kind of... Well, it did make a difference in the end. But we it came up with it for this way. You can set how long the game you how long you want the game to be, right? So there's a bunch of locations, and the last one was Haven, and you wanted to get here. This is this was where you wanted to. This was this. You know this. Nope. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is the castle. This is Haven. This is where you want to end up, right? This is what you're trying to get to. This is B. I'm sure you get the point. <laughs> So I was like, okay. So we have this path. We have Haven. What happens in these locations? What are they? So I, my initial thought was like, what if this was just a house? You know? And what if these, this house had rooms? And depending on each room, you could be... Or <laughs> depending on each room, you would draw a different number of cards. Like, there'd be two cards, three cards, four cards, and like two cards, right? Because this game also is designed to be four, two to four players, uh, you can draw the most cards, right? You can e hit each room. Obviously, you would go for four and three, but if you had four players, you would hit all of them. And some places only had two, uh, two or three locations, so you, it'd be harder. So now you and both your player, your buddy, are here playing this game. You know, we're here playing this game. Is like, okay, so we draw cards. And this is now instead of separate decks, it's one deck. It's the it's that they they matched in all this pile, and now so whenever it says draw two, three, four, two, we draw from the top of this deck, and they're in our hand. And then we talk about what's our hand size, and we thought you know what would be cool. You know what's a big thing in games, inventory space, especially survival games. So we thought like if you take your simple backpack, all right, how many pockets does it have? typically four right one two three four and it's like well sometimes they have a divider in the middle so five right so you can only have five cards in your hand at any given time both of you and you still need food and water right because if you remember our core game loop gather craft fight allocate so this is the gather phase right so we'd say like you're you're, tr you're running from something so you the whole idea is you have to go from place to place to place until you reach it and you need food and water along the way. So, like we said, each card equals one day, right? So this is over the course of a week that you're traveling. So one card equals, or one location equals one day. And for every day, what do you need? You need food and water, right? So we didn't, we, we uh, originally said that you each need one food and one water to, uh, to make it to the game and we, we had a discussion about like if someone dies for whatever reason do do I carry on let's, let's say I die right I'm sad how does James still carry on and win you know like this do we both win does he win like what James begged a really good question is like what's the incentive to keep me alive you know let's say James has three food or only has food and water enough for him or me what's the incentive of letting me live so we had a few discussions about that and we came up with uh if i die you both lose <laughs> it seemed kind of greedy but it ended up working out in the end so if one of you dies you both die you both don't make it you're both trying to get there that's the goal is you both all players make it to haven if one of them dies it doesn't count so okay but you know if i can draw three cards and we have a total of seven you know draws here and there's four decks. We also added events, which is uh, think, something we didn't add in the other game. And events were exclamation points. Events were bad. Now, if you drew an event card, obviously an event would happen, and they're not always good. <laughs> Rarely are they good. So we had now we had five different kinds of cards in one large deck, and in a, in a best case scenario, and for this home, seven cards. So, you know, it wasn't guaranteed that we get food and water. So we came up with that you both, uh, we came up with a formula, uh, which was uh, half P, uh, hold on, half P, sorry, yeah, that's not what I want to say. It was half the amount of players 
rounded down. No? Yeah. So you took the total amount of players and you divided it by two rounded down. So... No, that's not it either. I'm sorry. I'm totally blanking. Essentially, if there's two players... I forget the, what we said, what the exact format was. I wanted to sound really smart, <laughs> but it's not going to happen. It's late. Um, <laughs> uh, so, for two players, you need uh, one food and one water. And for three players, you need uh, two food and two water. Essentially, one food covers two players. And the more you have, the more you need. The more players you have, the more food and water you need. And that ended up re uh, working really, really well for the amount of food and water you ended up drawing. Uh, and then so we, I started playing around with locations. I added like uh, a bunker when you needed uh, like a crowbar to get in, right? And it was like a big fucking bunker. It's like, oh, you can't get in me. And then there was like uh, another location was just nothing, right? You don't find anything. You carry on. So that was like, okay, so... I got food and water here. We used in every uh, every time you completed this little phase, you take one food and water. So I got that one food and water. Okay, that's gone. Next time I, I found one food and water, we're gone. Now we have different like nothing. So now we need food and water within one of the two spaces, or we lose. And that was a big thing that we worried about. It's like, can can we lose? Is this game possible to lose? It is. Trust me. <laughs> uh, another thing we took out after playtesting a bunch is that we would get this really early on. And we have materials, and we're like, well, I can't, I can't, I don't have, I can't craft the crowbar or the axe yet to get in here. So what's the point? So we ended up taking out uh, materials, and we sub that in for events. That way, they, they made events happen a lot more frequently. And whenever you found a weapon, it was a lot better because originally you had to make weapons, and there's only the three: the handgun, the M1 Garand, and the knife. That was the only thing in the weapons that you can get. And so taking this out and adding like the spear, the axe, and some other ones made weapons a lot better and a lot more helpful. And then we made a list of events. And there were six possible events, and you had a dice. Uh, you had a dice that you rolled, and every time you drew an event, because we were originally going to have another deck for specific events, but we thought, why don't we just have a dice and a list of events It's the, to the same effect. And then, like events is like one of the events was uh they're coming and you have all of all the cards that you drew pick one and leave the rest you know and so we had that and then we had a couple more locations it was like gang attack which was like um uh give up half your food and water or, or roll a dice five and six you win and keep it all one to four you lose it all stuff like that and there was like um there was a campsite Right, and the campsite was like, uh, you don't have to spend food and water for say for the night. You know, I added a we added a variety of locations to make it feel like you're actually going somewhere, and every every game felt a little different. You know, it kind of really achieved what we wanted in this game, and it kind of came together really well. And we you can lose this game, I promise you. It seems like you're almost invincible, but like if this is nothing and this is nothing, you die right here. Right, you don't have food and water. If like you got lucky to have this one. And I was worried about the duration of the game. This game took five minutes maximum, right? This game was great. Uh, it was really quick to play, demonstrate. All the mechanics are straightforward. You know, like, when you when you won, you won. When you died, you died. Like, I felt satisfying. And it didn't feel unfair when you died. I found. Uh, I felt like kind of like you just... It was kind of the luck of the draw, and when you're escaping from something and you're trying to get to somewhere it kind of is when you're trying to survive it is the luck of the draw so you know we look back as like okay hey, do we have our core game we have our gathering right we have our crafting what's the, are we this kind of replaced it was just fighting because like if you had to and like sometimes you did sometimes you didn't like this was kind of the fighting thing it was like do you have to fight or not and same with a gang attack and then allocate food and water and the secondary mechanics of this one was uh, it was cooperative, you know, it was inventory management, and um, yeah, so that was like our t t more, uh, it was not spatial, kind of inventory management, technically spatial reasoning, but not quite. There's no physical like inventory slots, like this weapon takes up three inventory slots, you only have two left, you know, stuff like that. So this game would ended up being our favorite game of the two, and I'll talk about that in our 
Postmortem. Hooray. <laughs> so, for the postmortem, um, the feedback when we got in the games was pretty good. James and I were more satisfied about the PvE, uh, PvE game rather than the PvP game. This one took a lot longer to demonstrate and it was a lot more convoluted and you have to play it a few times to get used to it. Um, and you know, like we had five minutes total, or we had ten minutes total pr to present each of these games, so five minutes each. And this game didn't really come together in five minutes. You had to play it for a little bit to understand the whole process. And this game took five minutes to play. So our professor Yifat asked us the question, which if we could develop a game further, which would it be? And it was this one. It was the path. It felt we would have added a lot more locations, a lot more. Um, you know, events and stuff like proper lists, and more, like we would have balanced the food and water a lot better. Um, Eve had also asked, uh, told us that we need to work on our mechanics a little bit, and I have to disagree with that actually. I think we need to balance our mechanics a little more rather than work on them because I think she, I think she got confused about what we meant on a few of them, but I felt like we could have added more, maybe added less, but I guess that is technically working on the mechanics, but I took it as like we need to hone food and water and like movement a little better but i would have to disagree i think the game came together really well both games did again the pvp one just took a little more time and we didn't have that much time also we narrowed down the deck so there's like four or five cards in each instead of like 20 to help speed along the game to show off the combat and i think that's where she mostly mentioned like that's when she said work on the mechanics that's what she meant for that too so i'm not terribly worried but uh i learned about like you know rapid prototyping i re like i thought i knew a lot about rapid prototyping beforehand but i like i really learned about rapid prototyping this time um and how to like make quick decisions i really liked what we ended up with um uh, gotta be honest uh, I'm, I'm really proud of the work we put into it and the thought process and the way james challenged my ideas it wasn't always just like yeah, that's a good idea. You know, like, you know, let's put it in. It was, is that a good idea? Why? Like, defend your point. And I, I really like that about James. It was, he was a really good partner to work with. In that case, had a really positive experience. There wasn't any time, like, we got mad at each other for something. Oh, excuse me, I'm out of breath. <sighs> I'm talking a lot really fast. Um, yeah, looking back, I wouldn't, I probably would have spent a little less time on the PvP game rather than the PvE game. So this is like this is our winner here. Alright. It's a little crown. <laughs> uh, I would have spent more time on this game rather than this game because it took us a while to really hone this game out and make it balanced and I felt this game just luckily came together really really well. And you know what I, I would have maybe cut down on some of the, like the complexity of this game because th this this is what ended up being this game was too complex it's too <laughs> too complex and this game was fast enough to be fun and lighthearted. so i learned about like how to make a fast game because uh, yeah people like long games but in this case this wasn't one of those cases where a long game is necessary because my attitude was like yeah the game works it just takes a while that's not always a good thing you know that I don't think the time you put into it was worth the reward you got at the end. But this game was. I felt like the reward you got for the amount of time you put in was a lot. Uh, I would have put... I would have liked to extend the game past 7 because we only had 7 locations. I would have liked to extend it past that. But maybe it was just like an option. Like, make the path as long as you want. Like, you know, like every card is like, what, 30 seconds maybe? So that's up to you. It was a very fast-paced game. I liked it. Um, I think we, once we, what we started with was we wrote down our core game loop, right? So, like, this was, hold on a second. Sorry. Our core game loop here. This was, like, our, our almanac, almost. This is what we kept going back to. And I'm, I'm really glad we wrote this down, because there's a lot of ways you can do survival games, right? There's uh, combat defense, like there's searching, like those are all kind of what we had, but there was 
you know, like, there's co more combat focused, there's more resources, more time focused, there's more like inventory management focused games. Uh, there's more movement based games and like exploration uh, in terms of survival. So, you know, I'm, we wrote we wrote down our core game loop, and every time we added something, we ch went back and checked: is it part of our core game loop, or is it a secondary mechanic? You know. So it usually up if we added something, it's like okay, it's a it's a good secondary mechanic. So we we made a point to not have it in the second game. So like the uh, the the intense combat that was in the first game, like the Phoebe. PvP, we made a point not to attack most things in the game. Like, we made it a lesser kind of a side thing where, like, oh, you kind of fight. It, the fighting is more implied than actual physical fighting. So, uh, yeah, I think the games went, like, our time went really well. It was a good project. I felt like we did really well on both games. Obviously, this game, there are, our path game, still have the same color. Our path game is our, um, you know, crowning jewel. And you know what? We might work on it further. It's a really cool game. People had a lot of fun. I want to play it again soon and uh, test it out. See if it was just the adrenaline kicking in, you know, that I enjoyed it. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching our, uh, my devlog and postmortem. And uh, have a good night. Bye.